I just want to, to open our Bibles now that we have all the greetings out of the way. We want to turn to our Bibles to Mark. And of course, the women from Oracle of Praise and Brother Elijah who accompany me here today. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 5. And I don't want you to get turned off from the time you hear Mark. I'm not going to speak about healing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mark chapter 5. From verses 25, we'll pick it up from there. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. I'm um, sorry, Pastor um, Kathy Ali, I just want to acknowledge you too as well. Sorry about that. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touch his garment. For she said, if, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of the blood was dried up. And she felt in her body she was healed from that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. The entrance of thy word giveth light. We thank you for your word today. We pray, O oh God, Father, that you would minister to each and every one. We thank you for the power of the word. We break the powers of darkness. We bind the forces of darkness. We come up against every plan of the enemy to disrupt this service in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you would break forth. We pray that you would manifest yourself. We pray that your glory will be revealed today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you praise. We give you all the honor. And we give you the glory. And we thank you, God, for what you're about to do today in Jesus' wonderful name. And all God's people say, amen. Have your seat. Praise the name of the Lord. My subject title today is strength to come back from a setback. Strength to come back from a setback. And I want you to know that I will not be focusing mainly on healing. But I want us to know that we're going to be looking closely at this woman. Because most of the time you hear a lot of preachers preach about the healing aspect. But I think we hardly pay homage to the woman and the strength of that woman with the issue of blood. And before I attempt to go any further, we want to put some things in perspective. And for us to really appreciate this woman, we want to look at certain things by defining the word strength. So if you have your paper and you're writing, the first thing we're going to define the word strength. And the word strength means one, a source of power or force. One, a source of power or force. Second, the quality or state of being strong. The quality or state of being strong. Thirdly, it means mental power, force, or vigor. Mental power, force, or vigor. Fourthly, the capacity to do something. The capacity to do something. So that is the definition of the word strength. The next definition we're going to look at is what is a setback? What is a setback? One, an act or instant of setting back. One, it's an act of or instant of setting back. Two, it's a problem that makes 
progress, more difficult, or success, less likely. It's a problem that makes progress more difficult or success less likely. And thirdly, it means defeat or reverse. Defeat or reverse. So as we look at this entire passage, we're going to look at some key areas here tonight. And I'm not going to be long because we're going to participate tonight in our breakthroughs. Are you hearing me? We are going to participate in our breakthroughs. According to the text, we're going to look at this woman who suffered. We're going to look at her symptoms first. We are told that she suffered from an issue. The word issue of blood, it literally means that she was flowing with blood or flowing of blood. When you see the word, um, she had an issue of blood, it means flowing of blood. It literally means also that she was hemorrhaging. And we are looking at her symptoms here tonight. She was hemorrhaging. In other words, what they didn't know what was causing the hemorrhage internally, but this woman was a very sick woman. These were the symptoms this woman was experiencing as a woman flowing with the issue of blood. Secondly, she was suffering. These were the symptoms, but she was also suffering. It was a constant flow of blood. And many of you know, ladies know tonight, you have your regular period. Between five to seven days for the most. From the time you see it going eight, nine days, you're ready to check a doctor. Yes, because it is abnormal. Amen? This woman, picture this woman, was experiencing this every single day for 12 years. 12 years this woman was experiencing hemorrhaging. She suffered. She suffered a great deal. But I want you to know tonight, many of us may be experiencing not a flow of blood, but we are suffering and we are experiencing, my God, so many different things in our family. But I have news for you, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. She suffered. Hemorrhaging, flowing of blood for 12 long years. She also suffered physically. She had a physical condition. She suffered. Many of us will know that there are things in life we did not cater for. Hello, can you agree with me? There are things in life just come up upon us. You can imagine this young woman wasn't expecting anything like that. And just like this, this thing just come up on her like that. This is what sometimes setback does. All of a sudden, you didn't cater for certain things, but it just pop up in your family. You didn't expect your husband to walk out on you. You didn't expect your wife to walk off on you. You didn't expect your children to rise up and be rebellious in the home. But there are setbacks in our family. There are setbacks in our lives. There are setbacks in our church. But I want you to know that you can come back. And you can make a strong comeback. This woman suffered physically. The least of effort she told she do, she was totally tired, worn out. I know what it is to be anemic. I remember very early, the doctor declared that to me. And I tell him I'm not anemic. But in the process, I had to, I live, I mean, on, 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 on iron. And if you don't take it, it's a, I live on iron whether you, you're having your menstrual or not. I have to take iron, an overdose. I had to always ensure that when that time of demand comes, I have sufficient iron in my body. Because I, I will be pale. I remember some years ago, people say, Gil, you're looking so nice. And how are you looking so white? I read thinking it's the glory. I go, what oh, glory? Pale. <laughs> Anemic. I feel it real good, the glow of God, glory of God on me is anemic. The doctor just do like this. You know, they look at the eyes, 
and gone. And these ladies will know, they will, they, they will cook for me every Sunday and they must put the callaloo. And sometimes I get fed up. I tell my husband, when I'm done, I like the green machine. I like Hulk. Everything is green. So I could identify with this woman here. Physically, constantly. Have to, to, from the time you, you walk up the stairs, you're tired. From the time you wash a little ways, you're tired. And I want you to understand the thing that this woman went through. So she suffered physically. She suffered. And thirdly, I looked at this woman. This woman also suffered emotionally. This woman suffered emotionally. There was a period in her time you think she didn't long to be like the other woman. There were times when this woman would get up and she longed to be. You understand? I don't know if she was married or not. The scripture didn't allude to that um, um, fact. But you could imagine emotionally how she was feeling. Not to mention she also suffered socially. She could not have been among the people. She could not have been among the people, the society. So she was alienated. Talk about rejection. She had to be inside. She had to be away from people. She suffered religiously. Because according to Leviticus chapter 15 and verse 19, from the moment someone touched her, they were deemed as unclean. So religiously. So when you look at it, in the fact she was all alone, she was by herself. Just like the lepers. My God, if they're coming through the street, at least the lepers are never going to still come through the street. If they're coming through the street, they had to just ring a bell. Unclean. 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 This woman probably didn't do that. So she decided, well, you know, ladies, stay inside. Just keep yourself away from crowd. Because it's mentally, it's affecting you. Socially, it's affecting you. I couldn't even come in the temple to worship like the other women and them. Because if I just touch them. And you know today in church. From the time you have an ailment. From the, and you know it's the ailment. From the time you don't look like the others. But tonight is not that night. i leave that for Pastor Day and Sister Merle. Reverend Merle to deal with. From the moment. Because we go through. We go through in churches too you know. From the time I don't dress like you. I alienate you. From the time I don't smell like you. From the time I don't speak like you. So we go through it in our churches. And this woman went through it religiously. You understand? She could not affiliate herself and go into the temple. Not to mention the woman suffered financially too. Every doctor for the past 12 years she go to. And it's a lucky thing we're taping it. And no offense, you know, because I believe it has some doctors. They know what's going on with you. I hope there are no doctors here. It has some doctors, hey, scratch that off, eh? but it has some doctors, they know exactly what's going on. And they're only taking your money. Come back, and you know what they just tell you? Come back in two weeks. But they'll never tell you when you come back, you don't have to pay, no. They're telling you come back in two weeks. I remember I experienced that when I gone, and I didn't even, when I reached in there, and I come out, the lady say, hello. And she said, uh, $200. I thought when you mean come back, you remember you saw, you, 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 you look at me and if you tell, I never tell you I wanted to come back. You tell me come back. You told me come back. But here now it's a trick, you know, when they tell you come back, come back with money to her. Yes. And the woman suffered financially. The woman, all her earnings, the woman empty her bank. And that woman decided my God, she tried every single thing, everything that she could think of. The woman tried. My God, I could imagine some of us, we pray, we fast, and it's like we're not seeing anything. We go down on our knees. We pray, we fast, and like the thing's just getting worse. We pray, we fast, and it's like the man worse off than the thing. We pray, we fast, and it's like the children worse off. We do so many things, and somehow we feel like nothing is happening. But I have news to you. I have news to you. This woman was set back. This woman was progressing. Instead of going forward, this woman was progressing. And this woman, all her strength was gone. 
all her strength was lost. And it's like the woman didn't know what next to do. But I have news for you. I want you to know there are some principles that the Lord ministered to me that I want to share with you tonight. And it's so important that whenever you caught up or you had a setback in your life, it is very important that you understand some of the principles. And first principle I want to bring to you today is whenever you make a commitment to come back, prepare to face the enemies unrelenting attempt to set you back. Whenever you make a commitment to come back, prepare to face the enemy's unrelenting attempts to set you back. But I have news for you. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 29 said, He gives strength to the weary and increased the power of the weak. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The second principle I want to share with you today is the enemy uses the tool of discouragement. Whenever you want to come back, the enemy uses the tool of discouragement. You can imagine this woman. She was discouraged. She was discouraged. She was lonely. She was rejected. She was all by herself. And the spirit of discouragement came upon her. I want you to know today that when you are discouraged, it is important to know who to link up with and who to associate yourself with. Because I'm telling you, when sometimes the spirit of discouragement comes to you, there are people instead of they lift you up, they will take you down. They will take you down of self-pity. They will take you down a road where you feel sorry for yourself. But the psalmist David said, why are so downcast down? The psalmist David was discouraged. But he speak to his soul. He speak to his spirit. And he said, hope in God. He's the lifter of the recounted And let me tell you something. When the spirit of discouragement comes to you, my God, there are time you need to talk to yourself. You need to talk to your spirit. You need to speak to your spirit. And this woman went through a period of discouragement. But you know, while I was looking at the text, one of the things I observe, and that's my third principle, is that the enemy uses force of numbers to form a collision against you. Let me explain. The enemy uses force of numbers to form a collision. You know, in ministry, you often go through lonely periods. And ministers will know that. And you go through periods where you don't know who to trust. Amen. Oh God, all you don't sit like all you know I'm talking about, you know, I can't jump down there. In ministry, you go through some lonely period. As a pastor, you go through some lonely period. You go through some spell of discouragement. And one of the things that the enemy would use, he would give you the impression that the entire church is against you. Let me hear some amen. amen. He will give you the impression. And sometimes it's just one or two persons. <laughs> that, deal in, that, that literally against you. And not the entire church. But he amplifies everything. And give you the, just like in the office. Sometimes one person don't like your head, you know. And all on a sudden, the way of the enemy will play this thing off. You feel the entire office against you. You feel your boss against you. And you begin to react. And you come in now with an attitude because you tell yourself, my boss against me. She put this one against me. But there's something in the scripture. I remember when the Bible said, when God spoke to Elijah, he said, there are more that before you than those that are against you. And let me tell you something. The enemy will use force of numbers. And let me explain this. Because the woman, when she heard about Jesus, the word of God said she came in the press. This woman decided 
that listen, I try every single thing and it didn't work. They take my finances. So she heard about Jesus. And the word of God said she get into the press. Now, mind you, remember this woman was alienated, eh? This woman supposed to be an outcast. She's not supposed to be among society. Hello, but that day everybody wants something from Jesus, you know. So if everybody thinks, I might as well follow the crowd. So this woman, the Bible said, she got into the press. Because she was somewhere about where she heard about Jesus. That is why it's important because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Something ignite that woman when she hear because it's just like blind Bartimaeus. You know, he missed Jesus when he was going in but when Jesus was coming out he hear all the commercial and you know, he put himself so and he don't know he blind you know, but he just hearing some kind of things that just like over here I hear the chains falling my God there was something rumbling in the spirit. There is a lot of commercial was going on in the spirit and blind Batima said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And the, the disciples said, Shut your mouth, man. Well, he had an attitude. He said, Jesus, the word of God said, He shout more. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. This woman got in the press and she couldn't care less. She break all rule, whether it's religious, whether it's social barrier. This is my one way, my one way ticket to get my breakthrough. I'm jumping in the press. I'm going in the press. Let me tell you something about strength. Many times we don't know that we have it inside of us. Just fall off the edge or get to the edge. And my God, you never know. Just as how when you know certain things happening in your family and your children, you know us, like them mother hen, from the time you see somebody coming to attack your family, you're right. Sometimes, we don't know that we have all what it takes inside of us, you know. Because you see, we miss the fact that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We miss the fact that the greater one living inside of us. So sometimes you miss and wonder where I get that strength from. Is the Holy Ghost inside of you? It's God inside of you. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God lifts up our standard. Never know that you had strength until you face adversity and you stand up so the God inside of you rise up. This woman got strength. She went in the press, uh, breaking all protocol. And the Bible says she began to follow and she began to follow and she began to follow and she kept her eyes on the target. She kept her eyes on Jesus. Mind you, this woman didn't want her audience and to be in Jesus' face. You know, all this woman wanted. She said to herself, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, not touch the man, not have an audience, not talk to him, but if I could only Touch the hem of his garment. I know I will be made whole. If I could only, my God's strength will cause you to talk to yourself. Look, answer back. That's the thing about strength. You begin to talk to yourself. You begin to say, I ain't taking this any longer. Devil, I ain't taking this any longer. Come out, my family. Come out, my home. Get out of my husband. Get out of my children. My God, and most of you know the story. When I was facing battle with my children. And my God, rebellion rose up. My God, I will wait for them until they go out to school. And I will go in that room. Go in my daughter room. Go in my son room. Throw some oil in their shoes. Throw some oil in their clothes. Get out. Open the window wherever you're coming. Out. Exit. Under the bed. Get out. See, I know how to fight. I don't know about you, you know, but don't touch my family. Say anything about me. Don't touch my husband, my daughter, my son, 
my dog, my cat, nothing pertain to me. And I know what I'm talking about, you mothers know that. Say anything about me, I could stand and I could take it. But when you start to interfere with my children, all hell break loose. And that's the same thing from the time you see the devil start to act up in one child. And like the other one, catch the spirit and drive it all on your outside. Get out. Spirit of rebellion, come out. That woman put herself in the press. And she go in. I go in. And I go in. And I go in. And it's amazing, you know. Because nobody had time to look at that woman, you know. The Lord is now to set you up, you know. The Lord is now to bring you out from a setback. All the time, the lady inside there, and my God, she alienated. Nobody had nothing to do. But the thing about it, the Lord set up the scenario that everybody wants something from Jesus. So we go in. We go in. Everybody want to meet Jesus. So nobody in had time to look at this woman. Even though she must have touched some of them, they care because them have their, their eyes on the price as well. So she said, hey, God, have a way of setting things up. Don't be perturbed. Don't be frustrated. God has your season. Amen. And when your season comes, nobody can stop you. Yes. That woman got a strength inside. And she began to walk. And she began to walk against the crowd. And she began to press herself in. You know what the thing I learned about this woman? And I close it, you know. Here are two things God wants his people to know. If you're taking notes. One, God wants you to know that our position will change when we make declarations. Amen. I know I didn't get that yet. God wants us to know that our position will change when we begin to make declarations. Let me tell you something. According to my God, according to the New American Standard Version, hear what the Word of God says. My God, in Job chapter 22, you will also decree a thing, and it will be established for you, and light will shine on your way. I want you to know you got to make some decoration, child of God, woman of God. You got to make some decoration. The woman began to speak to her situation. I know if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. That woman began to declare that she is healed already. All she just wanted to do is exercise her faith by touching the hem of his garment. She said, I know. I know, I know, I know. You know when you know, you know, you know. You know when it is in, you know, and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. If I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. There's something about no. There is something about no. You see, all through the scripture, whenever God say, and Adam knew his wife, they bring forth intimacy, something but <laughs> whenever it comes to adultery, the word of God will say, and David lie with Bathsheba. You look at the scripture. Whenever God speaks about knowing and intimacy. He used the word no. K-N-O-W. Whenever he has to deal with adulterous situation, he would always use the word lay. There is something about when you know God. When you know that this thing has an expiry date. In manufacture on this day, but it will expire. I am not allowing any situation to go beyond its expiry date. 
I go speed up the process. If I to pray it and speed up the process, I will speed up the expiry date. This woman made a bold decoration carol. I, or maybe you made whole. I just had to touch. And my God, things just started. Let me tell you something. If any two shall agree, that's all God wants. You and I, I know. She didn't have no time to hold this one and come and agree with me. It has some situation here, time for pastor, you know. It has some situation here, time to call sister, agree with me on the phone, you know. It has some situation where you have to rise up, apostle, and begin to speak to the situation. And you say, dry board, live again. Dead marriage, live again. Rebellious child, I speak submission. Has some situation you got to pray because you know God, you make a decoration. You see, tonight that thing that haunting you, it ending tonight. Yeah. Hell, all, I know some more revelation because if all they know, all they would have jump up. The thing that haunting you, the problem that seems so unmountable that you cannot, hello. It ending now. Madam, you land. Come for me. Come here. Land. Hmm. Land. You know what I'm telling you? Land. I don't know if you have your own home, but as you sit there, the Lord just show me land. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Tonight, ending. You see the guilt? While I was praying, the Lord tell me there's somebody here struggling with guilt you had a setback and you cannot come back at all because of that demon you call guilt i want you to know i serve notice on you today i make a decree i make a declaration tonight guilt ended tonight guilt ending tonight tonight we will prepare a burial ground tonight is a funeral service tonight 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 dead 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 dead, dead. that woman make decoration she made a decree if i could just touch the hem of his guy i knew i'll be made up. see them problems you're facing in the church tonight it ending See all them leaders who are rising up against you? Tonight it ended. I speak to it tonight. I speak to it tonight. All them uprising, my God, and all those who are fighting against the man and woman of God's vision tonight is the end. The second thing I observe about this woman, this woman made a decision to change her position when she was determined to change her position. So the first thing was declaration. The second thing, determination. Strength to come back from a setback. Declaration, speak it over your life. And secondly, you got to be determined. You know what I say? The conclusion of the matter is one, is that this woman's declaration was heard. And secondly, this woman's determination was held. Heard, held. Heard, held. She didn't speak it to others. But my God, she makes some decoration and she hear herself make the decoration. And then she held a position. I am determined to get healed. I ain't leaving Jesus. Come high water, low water, fall down, hit the head, stumble upon high water. Today, today, I ain't leaving until I get my breakthrough. Today, today, I will muster some strength to fight to push back the forces of the enemy, trample, dismantle the wicked plans of the enemy. But tonight, 
tonight is the night. Tonight is your night for deliverance. Tonight is the night when we're going to make decorations and when we will be determined and ensure that positionally we have or we hold our position. We determine to hold and to stand ground. Shake a little. My foot solid. Move a little. Push a little. Push aside. Elbow in my face. I am moving. I ain't stopping. I ain't going nowhere. I want Jesus just like you. I want my healing just like you. I want my breakthrough just like you. You could cough me. You could give me elbow. You could kick me. You could spot your hands like this and say, okay. I am determined to hold my position and not moving. You see, everything is positional. And everything is not so much physical positioning. Positioning you know, is a mental positioning. <laughs> Most of our battles are being fought in the mind. Are you hearing that, ladies? Women and men of God? Most of our battles uh, fought in our minds. She said to herself, it was her mind. She started to speak. Let me tell you something. Hey, your mind powerful, you know. I think I share this example here in this world. Let me tell you something. I don't like to use public toilets, eh? And I remember some years ago I in Port of Spain, and a diary held hold me. You know what my mind tell me? I'm not home, and I'm not using no public facility. My mind begin to talk to my body. That's how powerful our mind is. Well, you don't know, you know. That's how powerful. Immediately, my mind already sends signal to my body. You're not home. Not in here. Everything has to shut down and hold up. Put a pampers there spiritually. But everything on lockdown. That's what your mind tells your body. I'm making a point, you know, and I don't want you to miss it. The moment I could even reach Tarima, so I stopped out in Batare by my mother. Pastor Joyce, the moment I got out of the car, you know what my mind tell my body? You're home. Even though I wasn't in Arima, but I grew up in Batare, I am comfortable there. My mind already, hello, sends signal to my bowels, my body. I home. From the time I opened that door, and I start to run, the rest is history. <laughs> and all you're waiting to hear the final results. Look at all you. You understand what I'm saying? From the moment that woman, Sister Cathy, said to herself, all the sick and weak and anemic, Pastor Joyce, from the moment she said to herself, and start to talk to her mind, if I could only, whether you see it as a wish, whether you see it like she's dreaming, all she said, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. Immediately, the mind began to talk to the anemic body, and all of a sudden, she gets strength. All the time, she frail, moving about, move too close because from the time you wash the little wares, you're tired. You have to lie down. This woman mind spoke to her body and this woman decided I go fortify myself. And, and you know, she already understood the crowd. 
that she was against. So she prepared her mind that I don't know how far I will make it. And I don't know if I could make it to Jesus. But if I could only just touch. And because she began to speak to herself. And if any two shall agree as touching anything on her. The Lord just began to get this woman strength. And she just keep going on. And just keep going on. And just keep going on. And pressing her way to the crowd. And pressing until she grabbed her. And she grab hold. And she grab hold. That woman touched Jesus like nobody else touched him. The crowd, hello, the crowd was falling. You think some people didn't touch the, touch the crowd, didn't touch Jesus? Jesus pay no mind, no attention. From the moment that woman hold that so You know many things she said out there. You know how many messages she said to Jesus there? Because my God, when Jesus finished, he said, I feel virtue. I feel the anointing. I feel like everything just leave me. And just went on this lady. He said, who touched me? This disciple say, Jesus, you see this big crowd. You could ask her. You know, some of them disciples, very pertinent. In. You know that? It has some people. Some, some of the people, they lead the church because they pastor, you know. It's sometimes the people who are affiliated with the pastor. Oh, God. Let me go back, eh? You see, sometimes they want to see the pastor. And you begin to play bodyguard. And tell the people when they could see the pastor. No, but I know it's a minister's telling me. The people and them say, you can't see pastor. Yes. Let me go on this side. These people like, um, these people like they understand what I'm saying here. It has some people and the pertinent fast disciples. The one who was all kind of thing. Cosbord, wherever. And God take them. Jesus take them, wash them up and finish them. And put them in the kingdom now. And now they become disciple. They become big bodyguard. You understand? And hello. Jesus said, who touched me? And they bawling. Oh God, Jesus, all this crowd, you expect me? Man, I would have put them in the place. Because it's the same disciple that tell blind Batima, shut him out. Is he saying, I tell you sometimes it's the people who may be affiliated to you, them running the people. Sometimes you need to get and investigate. Because sometimes it's not the pastor. They love the pastor, they love the ministry. But sometimes the people who you have in leadership, instead of have the heart of the pastor, they don't have the kind of passion. And where the pastor will take some time and sit and meet with them. They go on, you have no time. Where you come for? We have no money, you know. We don't keep money in the church. No, I telling you, you know. I telling you. Because I used to work as a secretary in the church. And, and where you right, we located in Arima, somebody always coming for money. And I adopt this thing. I used to be like a bee. They have no money here. We don't keep no money in here. We want. And my husband had to rebuke me. And I mean, so if, if 20 people come and cry, they have nothing. You go empty your pockets. You go empty the church account. And we always had log ahead because I always come in, you know, political and constitutionally right, you know. You're, you're wasting the church money. And don't do this and don't do that. Oh, come on sometimes. I say you think we should give them? I said, let them go and look for work. I said, she just wants to stay home. I just see her, you know, I live in here, you know. Pastor, you ain't living in the area, you know. But I thank God for blind Batimas. Because he had a real attitude. When they say, shut up, shut up. And you get real mad. Hello, the worst thing you could tell me is I can't, you know. Man, I will show you that I can. Hello. 
I just want some negative. That's why I tell you negative people have their place, you know. <laughs> Don't pray them out of the church. Some of them who give in trouble, God put them there so that we will keep on our knees. Keep us humble. Some of them they put in the office, they don't pray for them because long time I used to say, God, kill them. <laughs> Sudden glory. Take them up, Lord. And when I find like they ain't moving, I realize it's for me the Lord put them for. Keep me humble. Keep me on me. Keep me prayer. And to deal with Karen. To deal with hatred. To deal with animosity. And to deal with them that even though they're talking me bad and they say it all kinds, I had to love them. I to love them from a distance. Right hand fellowship. But I realize it ain't working. Yeah, I know the thing, you know, in church long. I forgive them, Lord, but I ain't gonna forget what they do. And when I see them, I go, how are you going, sister? Oh, if I see them coming, I pass here. Yeah. Sister, you ain't see me. Oh, God, oh, God, I didn't make you. Lies. I see you loud and clear. And it happened. But the Lord, when that woman touched him, and he felt something, all on a Sunday, woman was nothing. This is my part I lie. Nothing. Nothing in the eyes of society. Nothing. But all of a sudden, she touched Jesus in such a way she got audience one time. No middleman. No hello, can I have an appointment with you? All of a sudden, this woman was nothing. In the scripture, she start off as a certain woman. Check out in the end. Daughter, thy faith has made the whole. Nothing. Certain woman, when she finished, and Jesus finished with her, and she came into contact with Jesus, she no longer carried the title certain. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. My God, I want you to know today that you continue to make your decoration and decree things in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in your workplace, on your job, in your area where you're living, you make certain decoration and be determined to hold and keep that decoration and stand fast and not flinch or don't move but stand firm. And God will give you the strength and give you the breakthrough that you need. Stand to your feet. Tonight you're here, and you say, Lord, Pastor, I need his strength. I need strength. I really can't make it on my own. I'm tired. I'm weary. But I want you to know the Lord said, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. They shall mount up with wings as eager. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. You're here today. And for some reason that you're losing ground. You're here and you had a setback in your life. And you tell yourself that you will never come back. People say you will never come back. But I want you to know that they crucify Jesus. They spat upon truth. They didn't even know that they had truth with them. They spat on truth. They ridiculed truth. They say all evil and manner about truth. They buried truth. But on the third day, truth. 
truth rose again. I want to tell you tonight that you can come back from a setback if only you will declare tonight and break the powers of the enemy over your life. And you'd be determined that I'm not leaving here the same way I came here. I want you to come. Could the worshippers come? I have no magic in my hand. I said earlier on today, could you just pass me, Sister Mendy, my red wash? I said today, earlier on, that you're going to participate in your breakthrough. Thanks. So I want you to know I have no magic in my hands. You've got to reach out. And you're going to take your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I know the woman of God and this entire church have been praying. So I know God is here. I want you to lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord. I want you to participate in it because that one, she spoke to herself. So I want you to know that I would not be here all the time, neither Reverend Merle Gardner, neither your pastors. But you have to talk to your situation. And you have to talk to yourself and say enough is enough. Hide me now on the Winds cover me anyway. Mm. When the oceans rise and turn the rock, I will soar with you. Pastor Camille, you know it? Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you are God. When the ocean rise, and turn the road, sister Kathy, you know it? I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you are. Oh, when the oceans rise and turn the road, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over. God, I will be still, know you are God. When the ocean, when the ocean rise, the does roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Lift your hands, Father, you are Still, 
know you are God. I will be stand. Know you are God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. Oh, shakala masai. When you're done, you're going to sing there is power in the name of Jesus. Eh? In the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh. I 
I will be still Know you are God When the oceans rise And thunder roar I will soar with you Above the storm Father, you are king Over the flood I will
couple people that the Lord wants you to be still and know that he is God. I feel it strong in my spirit. There are some people here that are facing some crisis situation and you want to help God and somehow you feel like God is taking too long and that he's not seeing. And it's like the, the unfairness, the injustice is overwhelming you. And you want to help God. And you want to come out and fight for yourself. But the Lord wants you to know tonight, I feel strong in my spirit. I should tell someone this. The Lord said, I'll fight your battle. Lift your hands. Be still and know that I am God. Lift your hands. Be still and know that I Before I sing this song, there's somebody here who has a land issue, and it is in the court. I want you to know whoever that person is. God wants you to know that you already settled that issue. He is your lawyer. He is your defender. He will fight for you. You have sought lawyers. And when I say lawyers, because many of them have disappointed you. But you have failed to seek the greatest lawyer and mediator. Tonight, that issue is over. I already see papers fixing and the magistrate calling you and settling it. That land belongs to you. You inherit it. It belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. Be still and know that I 
Pastor Joyce, where you are situated in Shagornas or somewhere there, the work that you're carrying on, when I was on top there, the Lord said there's another building that he's giving you. We say, I know that I to lift your hands as we are about to dismiss. Be still and that I you need for downstairs. It's coming. Everything you will see how quick that work will finish downstairs. Be still and know oh. the next building that he's given you has everything in it. That I am called finish in record time that I lift your hands and give him praise come go there's a repositioning there's a changing there's a different order there's a different world that I am God this walk you will know God you will know God but there will be some dark dark dark, dark areas that you feel that you're in the desert all by yourself. Feel that you're all alone. The Lord said, those days and in that dark hours and in that wilderness, you will know God like you never knew him before. And when you come out, you will just start to touch things. You will just start to speak things and things will just line up. It's a different walk with God. A different walk. A changing of shoes. 
as new walk, new ring on our chin. That I am God. One more time as we dismiss. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Be still and know that. When your ladies return, there are some things God had to move your way. Many of you say you're coming, but you didn't know that it was all orchestrated by God. There are some things that he will fix that you left wasn't fixed. And when you go back, it will be fixed. God had to clear you all out of the way and give him some space and time. That when you go back, you will see some things that you left undone, unfixed. God will fix it when you return. This land is a large, it's a big, big, big land. Big, big, big land. There's prosperity, I don't know, blessings. Jesus, I feel like if God just open a suitcase and throw money on this lady. Favor, favor, favor. Favor, you know. Blessings. The Lord said, you, you're so in tears. Jesus, Lord, you're going to reap in joy. Mm -mm. You're so, when even you don't have your soul, you give your last might. You just gave. People don't see when you give. You just gave. You're a private woman. You don't talk when you give, but God sees. And I feel like just, I just send, I, I just see like a suitcase just open and money flowing. Prosperity and I see that land, a big land. All the talk and all the thing you have deep down in your heart, you was crying out for God and telling God, if I owe me, I have this, I want to do this. He will break, yeah, the Lord will accelerate it. Things that was in the back burner, he bringing it to the front. But you came here for a reason. When you go back, you will see them doors spring open wide. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Lift your hands with me. Oh, God, young lady, come. You in the yellow, come. In the name of Jesus. And oh, I am God. Hallelujah. You see your ministry? That God has called you and your husband to in Grandy. You are one of the key person. <laughs> You're very unassuming. People look at you and they formulate all kind of perception about you. But they don't know you. You don't talk, but you just write plenty. You just write down different things. And like you recall dates and different things. And there are times when God speaks to you. And you write certain things down. And you don't make a big balloon and blow the trumpet, you know. But every time you write down. And there are a lot of things that you just see come to pass. But the ministry that God has entrusted in. You pay a very important one. And one of the areas I see you working behind the scene in terms of administration and networking and putting all the nitty gritty together. The law is the first time I, I don't talk about relationship, but God said I divinely connected you. I give you that man. I give you that husband. The Lord said he, he handpicked you. He knows exactly what he's doing. And in terms of the ministry, my God, it will just blow up. Because you will be the fix-it woman behind the scene, dotting your eyes, doing things. Yeah. And your husband had to listen to you, you know, because you know, you just give some advice. And you just see things from afar. And you say, honey, let us do this. 
baby, let us do this. And the Lord will show him that every little suggestion, every little idea that people think is way off comes from God. God download ideas and wisdom in your mouth. That when you speak and you say things, it is. But my God, within three space of years, you will just see growth. Growth, 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 growth. Phenomenal growth. And the church will just start to grow. And the Lord said, God, because everybody affiliated now and they want to know this sudden growth. God will cause you to move from the backside and God will just bring you forth. And all these time people go, where did this woman come from? Where she was all the time. Just like David. Backside of the desert. Doing all the dog work. Doing all the underlining work. All the things. And setting up the stage. And all of a sudden he just come forth. And who is this little man? Who is this little man? That's what God wants to do in your life. Lord said, I've anointed you. My God. And you're a praying woman. Oh my God. My God. You're a praying woman. You pray for your husband. You pray that God will keep him. Many times in a private life, my God, you're just praying and asking God. And you're asking God to bless him and to bless the ministry. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for that anointing. I thank you for the wisdom that you have bestowed on this woman of God. We thank you, God. Bless her hands. Whatever she put her hands to do, bless her in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, woman. Praise the Lord. Let's stand in the presence of God and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, give God praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Let's give him thanks. About the same, everything, we give God thanks. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Let's be determined. We are making our prophetic declarations and we are going from strength to strength. Somebody shout glory in the house. Glory. Hallelujah.